The stock market took a beating today on fading optimism about the trade deal between the US and China. As the day progressed, algorithms slowly bought the dip knowing that Larry Kudlow and the crew would be out in the media in a day or two to give the computers more reason to buy. Ultimately, nothing has happened in over a year and yet we're still pretending that we're almost there, just a matter of signing a few papers. This is nothing but a distraction from the global economic collapse and yet the majority have no clue what's going on. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what is happening in the real economy. I'm going to show you several factors that are really important. We're going to talk about what happened in the markets. We're going to look at what's going on with underlying fundamentals that aren't being covered in the mainstream media for the most part. You're not going to see those reported on a monthly basis. Then we're going to talk about Jeffrey Goondlock, the bond king. I have some other data to show you as well. Things are not not what they seem. Let's get into it right away. This is the markets and of course you can see what has happened. You will notice that time and time again, particularly in the afternoons, we do see that this does tend to rise up. The market is still down. I mean, if you see it here, we're looking at 280 points on the day. The Dow Jones is still at 27,500. It has performed very, very well in the last little while, along with the rest of the U.S. stock markets. And even on a global scale, we have seen them come up quite a bit. The Asian markets, of course, are following along with what happened in the U.S. markets. And what was the reason for this? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. You can see the trade issues. We have seen it going back and forth, back and forth. Nothing new has been gained at all throughout this entire period of time. We have not learned a single thing other than the system is much more fragile than we're being told. This is a chart here that's just showing you over the years from ING, by the way, over the years, what has happened, all of the significant points within this trade deal, how they have increased their tariffs, what has been affected as a result. This just gives you a quick little snapshot if it's important to you to see that, you can take a look at this, either pause the video or I will have the link in the description. Essentially, the way I look at it is that nothing fundamental has changed in a positive light over this last year. Nothing whatsoever as far as I'm concerned. When you look at this here, you only see it getting worse. There is no positivity. Now they've actually shrunk the whole trade deal down to just an agricultural deal. Can we just agree that you're going to produce some agriculture and we are going to buy it? And the answer apparently is no, because we haven't even been able to agree on that because they started to stick in other things. Well, if I'm going to buy your agriculture, especially at this 50 billion magnificent number that they've created, there's no possible way that China is going to agree to that without some concessions. They want the tariffs removed and they're not talking about increasing tariffs. They want the existing tariffs. Maybe they're going to come and meet halfway. We'll see what happens. Now, this is really important. Why job growth could be significantly weaker than it has appeared. If you remember, I did a video about this a little while ago, but I wanted to cover it here and talk more about this in depth because I do believe that the average person, the average individual, even in the financial industry, does not know what's going on as it relates to the jobs numbers, to the inflation numbers, to the unemployment numbers, and everything else in between. They just believe whatever is there, the statement is put out, and they're never willing to look into the further details. As I have said many times before, and if you're a subscriber here, you know exactly what I'm talking about, that when you have these initial numbers that come out, that's what gets reported, that's what gets traded on, and that's what gets remembered. However, we often find that there are revisions to this data that come in later down the road. At that point, even if it's revised downward significantly, nobody cares. They're not going to worry about it, they're not going to look at it, and nothing's going to be affected as a result. Even when you have this data right here, it seems nobody really cares. Check this out. Initial benchmark revisions for the payroll count over the past year took 500,000 off the original estimates. Now think about that. You're looking at a significant drop. Did you see any effect in the market whatsoever? Of course not. They didn't look at it. They don't care about it. Capital economics expects the second quarter also to show growth at less than what was reported. Payroll gains have declined in 2019 at the slowest pace in eight years. All of this here is largely ignored, but nobody should be surprised of that. 
Now, further down in the article, the pace of payroll growth already around the weakest of the decade-old recovery. And I just want to stop there just to remind everybody that apparently we're still in a recovery, even though it's 10 years out, if you look at all the growth, supposedly, and yet they still use that word, could look even weaker once the number crunchers get through counting. As they say here, the first benchmark revision is to be released in January. Obviously, I'm going to have to do a video for you, but I'm just trying to foreshadow what we're about to see. This is what they predict to occur. Of course, that remains to be seen. But I do think it's important to look at all of this and start to analyze it and start to think about if this isn't on the mark, what else could there be that's going on behind the scenes? Obviously, they do this intentionally, but I'll leave that up to you to believe whatever you want. At the bottom, the latest quarterly census employment data on which those revisions are based suggests that the pace of payroll gains will be revised sharply lower in the second quarter too, painting a significantly weaker picture of the labor market. I do think that if we were to actually get this data into the mainstream, although yes, this is a CNBC article, nobody paid attention to it though, but if these numbers were what we would see, the computer algorithms would be looking at it a lot differently but of course this is the way the world works now these numbers here are just included with that you can see the non farm payrolls the quarterly census of employment and wages both of which have been moving down largely since 2018 along with all of these other economic indicators that have added up along this period of time there are many individuals, many groups out there, institutions that do calculations of different things like the inflation numbers, like the unemployment numbers, and so on. Even if you want unemployment numbers that are a bit more realistic, you can always go directly to the BLS and see their U6 statistic, and that will give you more insight as to what's going on. But if you want to go even further into that, whether it's employment, whether it, we're looking at the inflation and so on, shadow stats happens to be one of the more popular sources out there there are others but you can definitely rely on john williams and what he has provided over the years but it doesn't mean that we should necessarily base all of our understanding around just a few pieces of information this is just to add on top of what we already have this right here is an article that's referencing a interview that was done with Jeffrey Goondlock. He mentioned a few things and I just wanted to bring them up because of course this is an individual that is probably in the top of the class in terms of the information that he suggests and how important it really is. According to Goondlock, he sees a scenario where US stocks get crushed in the next recession and likely won't recover for quite some time to come. Now, what's he talking about here? Well, in this paragraph, he mentioned something that I thought was interesting. For several reasons, Gundlach warned that a pattern of going up for no reason whatsoever isn't likely to last forever. He added that investors should consider a pattern he highlights in his chart of the year, which divides the world into four regions, United States, Japan, Europe, and emerging market. And it looks at the main major stock market indices. What it shows in this pattern where the Japanese stock market, the Euro, the MSCI Emerging Markets Index all peaked before a recession, never recovering to pre-recession levels. The same fate might befall the S&P 500. Interesting, isn't it? Because if you look at the US stock market, clearly we had some problems. So if this is the chart here, and if you look at it, in 2018, we had some major issues there's no doubt about it January 2018 the market started to come down quite a bit and actually fell into recession territory and during this period of time we had a real surge upward but it didn't really hit an all-time high for many many stocks it took some time 
But then we had, of course, the fourth quarter of 2018, and that looked terrible, so we came back down. During this period here, there were a lot of individuals calling for greater easing, particularly from the Federal Reserve. Then in the last few days of 2019, we had the market surging up higher. And we looked through this period, particularly with the US stocks, they have actually accelerated beyond where they were before. But this moment in time, if you look at it on the global level, excluding the US, it has actually been around this level. Now that's not a good sign because here we are so long after that and still we can't push past it. The money is clearly going into the US equity market. There's no doubt about it. Whether we look at this on uh, you know any any form uh, that you wish we are watching the money just flowing in whether that's coming from the central banks or anything else we'd note that this is very very key on top of that we have the stock buybacks and so on which we'll talk about more in a second but i just wanted to mention this very quickly as we move into the chart itself here you can see equity market tops and it might be hard to see i know this is kind of blurry on here but i'm just going to show you very quickly we're looking at the s p 500 index being the orange line okay and you could see clearly it has far far surpassed everything else emerging markets being the blue line and we could see that right here this is the us way above and beyond that we're seeing the japanese stock market and the euro as well now these have been rather weak when you look at it on any level i mean come on the japanese stock market has still at this time decades later has still been unable to reach its peak now that's embarrassing on one level but at the same time think about the effect that QE has is it really beneficial if you're going to inject QE for decades and decades and you still are unable to recover now that is something that Jeffrey Gundlach had mentioned in this and I do believe that is worth mentioning to you as well so that's the chart there I'm not gonna banter on any more about it but let's look at this china has been responsible for the rise in global debt post crisis and of course we have seen this the shadow banking has been ridiculous we've looked at the debt levels i did a couple videos about china's 32 trillion dollar secret and you would witness this on so many different scales whether it's coming from the government itself whether it's coming from the private it doesn't really matter we are just seeing the expansion there have been the largest public works projects in the history of the world documented that over and over again but the orange area here is chinese non-financial debt when you look at the blue area, that's the world non-financial debt, excluding the Chinese. And clearly they're head above heels in this case. That's not a good thing because when you have this excessive debt, there is always going to be weakness and there will be fragility. And of course, big problems will follow along. Let's take a look at this next chart here. And uh, I want to continue on with this, but I want to be very quick. Not lower for longer, lower forever. And we're looking at the U.S. yields over this period of time where Rabble Bank does believe that we're headed. And of course, this is very serious because you cannot maintain these levels forever. You need to give some yield or else you have a serious dislocation. You have serious problems, but that's the way it's headed down forever. We'll see what happens with that in mind. Sokjen had this to say. If the measurement of company success is outperforming the 500 largest cap U.S. businesses supported by the U.S. Federal Reserve, debt-funded share buybacks, and increasingly sophisticated financial products, then you can understand why less businesses are going public and private equity is booming. Now, I think that's really important because, of course, we have the U.S. Federal Reserve, all of the QE, we have have the share buybacks and we have these most ridiculous derivative products that are here all pumping up these markets however we get this time and time again that there are dislocations there's always going to be a point at which we encounter an issue and you can't get away from that you can't prevent that but ultimately what they're trying to do is throw as much easy money at it as we possibly can 
but it never, never works. This always creates a crisis. And right now we have the most funny money they have ever created in history. Now, looking at this last one, just to point out, I talked about this on the community or blog section of my channel. The average person doesn't know what's going on. The average person in the financial industry doesn't even know what's going on. And this is part of it. You could see the average person will watch more than 78,000 hours of TV and they're distracted essentially is all I wanted to talk about. They're distracted. They don't know what's going on in reality. They can't figure it out. And of course, they never will. So if you do what the majority does, unfortunately, at some point, you will be burnt. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you hit the like button, you're supporting the channel. So I do appreciate that very much. If you want to build a business, if you want to learn about passive income and e-commerce, then this is a free e-course that I created for my subscribers. You can check it out at the amazongps.com. If you want to learn about the financial industry, interest rates, stocks, real estate, everything in between, check out these two books. The link is in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. Hang on a second, don't go anywhere. Have you seen this video? It's doing very well right now and I know a lot of my subscribers are interested in it. If you haven't seen it, click on it and I'll see you there.